بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته at grade 6 today we want to revise lesson 1 in chapter 11 the mean we want to revise the mean see with me now this video Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to begin a very interesting topic. Today we're talking about an introduction to statistics. Let's get started. All right, for the introduction to statistics, let's first define what exactly statistics is. So, statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting data. It's all about data. Well, first, you got to collect data. Data just doesn't appear. You got to collect it somehow. Maybe you do a survey and get data that way. Maybe you perform some experiments and you measure and record data as you go along. Once you have the data, well, then what do you do with it? Well, we organize it, put it in order, maybe from least to greatest. That's a common thing to do at the start. Uh, maybe you'll put them in a table. Maybe you'll make a graph. Uh, well, then you analyze it. What is the data telling us? We do things like find the mean, median, mode, or range uh, to kind of get a sense of what the data is all about. And then we interpret that data. What does it tell us? Now that we know and have all this data and have tried to analyze it somehow, how does that help answer whatever questions we were looking for answers for, okay? That's what statistics is all about. It's all about collecting that data and using it to help answer a question. So statistics is all about answering a question. Well, first, what exactly is a good statistical question? Well, a statistical question is where you expect to get a variety of answers. That's, that's really big. Uh, a variety of answers, a whole range of answers. You're not expecting just a couple different options, right? Uh, and you are interested in the distribution and tendency of those answers. Now, one more thing I want to add about statistical questions. Don't get confused from a survey question and a statistical question. For example, if your statistical question was, uh, how much do sixth graders weigh? Well, that's your statistical question. But when you do the survey, you're not going to ask people, how much do sixth graders weigh? You're going to say, how much do you weigh? And you go to the next person, how much do you weigh? And all the sixth graders you're going to survey, you ask them, how much do you weigh? That would not be a statistical question, but it's going to help us get data to answer the statistical question. So with that, let's get to our first example. Okay, example one. Let's say your science teacher asks you to do an experiment about mice, and she asks, what is the weight of a mouse? Okay. Well, first, is this a statistical question? And if so, explain. Now, if you remember from the definition, statistical questions should be giving us a variety of answers. Uh, they should be able to show us a distribution uh, and a tendency. So we have to think, well, this question, if I'm doing an experiment with mice, is it going to give me a variety of answers? And the answer is yes, it will because you can't expect all mice to weigh the same. They're going to be different, just like humans are going to weigh different amounts. Same with mice. So our answer, yes, because you would expect the weight of mice to vary. Let's try part B. Okay, part B. So we weighed a whole bunch of mice and we collected uh, that data and have it in this little table over here. Now what we're going to do is display that data in a dot plot. So it looks kind of confusing. It's hard to tell anything about the data, right? We've already done that first step, collecting the data. Now we're going to organize it uh, and we're going to make a, uh, a dot plot. Uh, and then after the dot plot's made, identify any clusters, peaks, or gaps. And we'll talk about what those mean in a second. But first, the dot plot. A dot plot is basically, you have a number line. Uh, it could be a horizontal or vertical. And then you use dots to show the where the different data values are. It's kind of like a little bit like a bar graph, except with dots instead of bars. 
Um, so we're going to start with a number line. Well, if I look at my data, I can see that uh, the least value is 18, uh, 18 grams, and the greatest was 28 grams. So that's where I'm going to start on my uh, dot plot. Okay, so I have my, my number line done uh, for my dot plot all the way from 18 to 28. I need to label what these values mean. So these were all weights. So I'm going to label that over here to the side. Weight, and that was in grams. Really important to label. Don't forget that or else nobody's going to know what those values represent. Uh, and then we just look at the data and, and put dots. So at 18, how many mice weighed 18 grams? Well, if I look at my data, I can count two. So I put one, two, just two dots right above that number 18. And I keep going. So 19, if I look, there were three. So I'm going to do one, two, three, like that. And we'll keep going. Um, at this point, you'll notice there were no 24s, no 25s, no 26s, so I'm going to put nothing there. Uh, and then I get to 27 and keep going, so there are two of those. And then finally, 128. Um, one good thing to do before you're finished is just double check uh, to make sure you've counted all of the, the data values. So just count your dots and make sure it matches uh, the values over there. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20. And if I look at uh, that little chart, I have 20 values there, so I'm happy with that. Now, dot plot is done. Let's go to the next part. Identify any clusters, peaks, or gaps. Well, let's look at the clusters. First, a cluster is where a lot of data values are kind of bunched together. So if you look over here, you'll notice, well, it looks like there's a whole bunch of data values right there. You're, you're just going to pick kind of what's in the middle where they're kind of all seem to kind of be drawn to. So that would be 20. Uh, so that's a cluster. You might be asking, is it possible to have two clusters? Sure. If you've got a big bunch here and another big bunch here, it's possible to have more than one cluster. That's okay. Uh, peaks. Well, hopefully you can kind of guess what that is. That's just, are there any things where it's the tallest? So right here, again, 20, there is a peak at 20. And same thing, it's possible to have more than one peak. If, for example, 21 also went up to 6, then we would say there's a peak at 20 and 21. But as of right now, there's only one peak because that is the tallest. Uh, and finally, gaps. Hopefully that's obvious, again, what that is, uh, where there's spaces in between the data values and that obviously is right here. Uh, so there is a gap between 23 and 27. Okay. So that's just kind of helping to uh, explain our data a little bit, bit more. Okay, and finally part C, use a distribution to answer what is the weight of a mouse? Our original statistical question. Well, Looking at that data, looking at our dot plot and seeing those clusters and the peaks, we can say that most mice weigh about 20 grams, right? Our cluster was around 20. Our peak was at 20. Uh, so that's how we would answer that question. Here's one to try on your own. All right, example two, the dot plot shows the heights of sixth graders in my math class. So here is the dot plot. You can see uh, these are all heights in centimeters, not inches. Um, and part A says, how many students are in my class? Well, if you remember, all of these dots represent a data value. So in this case, these dots represent one student's height. So to figure out how many students, I just count the dots. So let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So there are 22 students in my class. Okay, let's try part B. Okay, part B, how can you collect these data? Well, to figure out heights, we're probably going to use a measuring tape, 
right? And make sure that you're measured in centimeters, right? Because that's what the data was. Let's try part C. Okay, finally part C, write a statistical question you can answer using the dot plot and then answer that question. So we're writing a statistical question. Uh, it has to be about the dot plot. Uh, remember, this was about height uh, of students in my class. So maybe our question could be, how tall are sixth graders in Mr. Jacobson's math class? That is a question that we could answer using this dot plot. So that's great. There's our statistical question. And let's answer it. Well, how tall are most sixth graders in my math class? If you look, uh, we have two peaks right here. There's 56 and 57. By the way, you may have noticed I didn't label every single um, every single dash, uh, but if you notice, I'm going by the same amount. So 152, that would be 153, 154, 55, 56, 157, 158. That's fine. You can do it that way. Just be consistent. Um, so we've got a peak peaks here at 156 and 157. Uh, that's also kind of where we have a cluster. So we would say um, most of the students are what about 156 centimeters probably are about 156 centimeters tall hopefully you can see all of that uh that's it for example two here's one to try on your own As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe. So this is an introduction in statistical. Today we want to revise how to find the mean or average. When I say mean or average, the same meaning, the same meaning. See now with me this video. is called mean absolute deviation. And I said I have two, another two, a four, and a four. And then in the other data set, I have a one. I'm going to do this on the right side of the screen. A one, a six, and a four. Revision. Now, the first thing I want to think about is, well, how do I, is there a number that can give me a, a measure of, of a, a, a measure of center of each of these data sets? And one of the ways that we know how to do that is by finding the mean. So let's figure out the mean of each of these data sets. So this first data set, the mean, well, we just need to sum up all of the numbers. So it's going to be 2 plus 2 plus 4 I'm plus 4, and we're going to divide by the number of numbers that we have. So we have one, two, three, four numbers. So that's that four right over there. And this is going to be two plus two is four, plus four is eight, plus four is 12. So it's going to be 12 over four, which is equal, which is equal to three. So actually, let's just, let's see if we can visualize this a little bit on a number line. As you see here, here we have data. Two, two, four, four. When you want to find the mean, when you want to find the mean, remember, add all numbers inside the data, divide by the amount of numbers. How many numbers do you have here? One, two, three, four. So I can write two plus two plus four plus four, divide by the number, divide by the number of the data. So two plus two will be four, plus four will be eight, plus four will be 12, divide by four, 12 divided by four equal equal three. So, so and actually I'll do kind of a, I'll do a little bit of a dot plot here so we can see all of the values. So if this is zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And so we have two twos. And so why don't I just do, so for each of these twos, actually I'll just do it in yellow. So I have one, two, and then I'll have another two. I'm just going to do a dot plot here. And then I have two fours. So one four and another four right over there. 
and we calculated that the mean is three. The mean is three. A measure of central tendency, it is three. So I'll just put three right over here. I'll just mark it with that dotted line. That's. I can show the data using the line plot, the line plot. When you want to draw the line plot, the first step to draw number line. Then look to the numbers inside the data. Start from two to, to four. So you can you can start from zero, one, two, three, four, five. How many twos you have here? One, two. So put here two dot or two x. How many fours you have here? Two. So put here two. No zero in the data, no one in the data, no five in the data. And look to the mean. Mean will be three. So three here. If you draw the line here in the value of three, you will find the distance between two and the three, the same distance between four and the three. So this is the meaning of the mean. The mean will be in the center of the data, in the center of the data. Continue now. That's where the mean is. All right, well, we've visualized that a little bit, and that does look like it's the center. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it, it, it makes sense. So now let's look at this other data set right over here. So the mean, the mean over here is going to be equal to one plus one plus six plus four. All of that over, we still have four data points. And this is two plus six is eight plus four is 12. 12 divided by four, this is also three. So this also has the same mean. We have different numbers, but we have the same mean. Also here we have this data. We have one, one, and six, and four, and we want to find the mean. We want to find the mean. Always remember, when you want to find the mean, add all numbers, add all numbers inside the data, divide by the amount of numbers. How many numbers do you have here? One, two, three, four. So I can write mean equal one plus one plus six plus four, divide by the amount of number, divide by the amount of number. Now, will be four. 1 plus 1 will be 2, plus 6 will be 8, 8 plus 6 will be 12, 12 divided by 4, 12 divided by 4, also we have here a 3. This is the meaning of the mean. But there's something about this data set that feels a little bit different about this, and let's, let's visualize it to see if we can see a difference. Let's see if we can visualize it. So now I have to go all the way up to 6, so let's say this is 0, 1, two, three, four, five, Mister, six, and go one more, seven. Mister, there is something so I did not know. It. Tell me, please. Uh, the first one, that the upper one, when you find the mean, how we can do it? Here in, in yellow color? No, the green one. The green the yellow, one. I know. Yes, look to the, num look to the numbers here. Well, this this numbers we will call data. We will call here data. Look to the numbers inside the data. We have one and one and six and four. And we want to find the mean. We want to find the mean. When you want to find the mean, you have rule. Remember always the rule when you want to find the mean. The rule said when you want to find the mean, take all numbers inside the data and find the sum of these numbers. Add all these numbers. Add all these numbers. How? 1 plus 1 plus 6 plus 4. Then divide by the number, divide by the amount of the numbers, divide by the amount of the numbers. How many numbers do you have inside the data? We have here 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers. We have 4 numbers. So divide by the amount of number, divide by 4. Now you can calculate 1 plus 1 will be 2, 2 plus 6 will be 8. 8 plus 4 will be 12. 12 divided by 4, 12 divided by 4 will be what? Will be 3. Okay? Mr. I cannot hear. Mr. Mitwick. 
Not here. Oh, show me. Stuff. And one of the more uh, straightforward ways to think about. Yes, who has a question? Any question now? OK. What the meaning of the mean of data set? The mean of data set is the sum. This is the rule. This is the rule, the sum of the data, the sum of the data divided by the number, divided by the number of pieces of data. This is the rule to find the mean, to find the mean. It is the balance point for the data set. So the mean mostly always or sometimes will be where will be in the center of the data will be in the center of the beta of the data the same meaning of the mean the average when i say when i write the <laughs> okay when i say the average or mean means summarizes the data using a single number so average the same meaning of the mean so if the question said solve the mean or solve the average the same meaning, the same meaning. For example, the table show the number of CDs, find the mean numbers of CDs. We have here, we have here table. Inside the table, we have numbers. The, the numbers here inside the table, this is the data. This is the data. And we want to find what? To find the mean. We want to find the mean. What I do, the first step, you must remember what the meaning of the mean. What is the rule to solve the mean? The mean will be add all numbers, add all numbers inside the data, then divide by the amount of number. How many numbers do you have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can write here one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Divide by the amount of number. So I can find the add of all numbers here. 1 plus 2, 3 plus 3, 6. 6 plus 4 will be 10. 10 plus 5 will be 15. 15 plus 6 will be 21. Will be 21. Divide by 6. Divide by 6 will be 3.5. Will be 3.5. The second example here, the dot plot. When I say the dot plot or the line, the line plot the same, the same meaning. The dot plot shows the recorded high temperatures for six days. Find the mean temperature, find the mean temperature. Here we have, we have line plot or dot plot. And this dot plot about the temperature in six days. Uh, I have many temperatures, but, but the value here, uh, we have two days, we have two days, the temperature here 30, and one day 40, and three days, the temperature will be 50. This is the information, this is the data. So, how to find, how to find the mean? The mean said, the mean said, when you want to find the mean, or the, or the rule, add, add the all, the all numbers inside the data. What I have here, how many numbers? I have 32. So I can write 30 plus 30. Then I have 140 plus 40. Then I have 350. So I can write plus 50 plus 50 plus 50. How many numbers I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So divide by 6. So divide by 6. Now 30 plus 30, 60 plus 40, 100. Plus 50, 150. Plus 50, 200. Plus 50, 250. 250 divided by 6 will be... 41.66. So this is our lesson today. Today we revised the mean, what the meaning of the mean and how to find and how to find the mean and how to find the mean. Now see with me this video.
Hello, this is Mrs. Hyman. School. The scores for five of Danielle's math tests are 88, 92, 75, 84, and 91. Suppose that she cannot find the score for her sixth test, but she knows that the mean of the six tests is 85. What was the score of Danielle's missing test? Well, we have a couple pieces of information to use here. We know that for five of her tests, these are the scores, 88, 92, 75, 84, and 91. And there were a total of six tests. We also know that the mean of those six tests is 85. And then our question, what's the score on the missing test? So if we know that the mean for six tests is 85. That would mean that kind of working backwards from finding a mean, we could take 85, the mean, and multiply it times the six tests to get our total. So 85 times six, and that gives us 510. And then we can subtract out those five test scores that we know, and then that will leave us with what her sixth test score should be. So we're going to take 510. And we're, going to, we're going to subtract from that all of the other five test scores. So that's 88 plus 92 plus 75 plus 84 and the last one is 91. Okay, so we have 510. And if we add these all together here, we get 430. 510 minus 430 gives us 80. So that means that Danielle's missing score would have to be an 80 on that sixth test. Now I want from all students prepare your notebook or prepare your uh, any paper. And I want to from all to solve the first question. Listen one extra practice the mean. The question said here find the mean of each data set. Find the mean of each data set. We have here table. Inside the table, we have here the data. We have number of books read. Ron read some books here. Rina, Oscar, Tisa, Cain, Amir, Vera. This is the number of books, okay? And we want to find the mean. Yalla, start to solve and tell me what is the answer. لازم نحلها هيدا يلا عم بنتظر انا لازم تحلها نعم
بسألك عن ذا مين؟ وات از ذا مين؟ ذا مين از فايف فايف جريت 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 طيب هاو تو فايند ذا مين هير؟ هاو تو فايند ذا مين هير؟ وي هاف ذيس از ذا ديتا كاونت هاو ماني بوك كاونت هاو ماني بوك يو هاف انسايد ذا ديتا هير وي هاف فور اند هير وي هاف So divide by divide by divide by seven. Divide by seven. Why by seven? Because here the number the number of persons one two three four five six seven. So because divide. Seven. Okay. So thirty five divided by seven will be five. Will be five. So the mean here the mean here will be will be five. Five. Go to the next question. Also, we have here table. This is paragram. This is paragram. How to find the mean here? How to find the mean here? Yeah, let's start. Mr. 12. Okay, thank you. What's your name? Milad Wal. Great, Milad. Great, thank you. Mr. Did you give me mark when I answered the first one? Mr. If we have a reminder, we put with the, with the answer, we have a reminder, or we don't put the reminder. If you have remainder, put the remainder, yes. But but uh, put yeah. the answer as a decimal. Put the answer at as, a decimal, as a decimal here. Yes. Yes, sir, so, there okay. is no remainder. No mean? Fine, maybe. No remainder, there is mean, but no remainder. Ah, no remainder, no remainder. Great, great. What's your name? Hamad al-Zahri. Great, Hamad, great. Okay. Here we have a 12. Listen, here we have a 12. So write 12. Plus. Here we have 13. So plus 13. Plus. Here we have 15. So plus 15. Here we have a 12. So plus 12. 84. And here we have 12. And here we have 11. And here we have 9. Hala, divide by how many, how many power we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because 84. So divide by seven. Divide by seven. So the answer here will be, if I added here 12 plus 13 plus 84. 15, yes, plus 12 plus 12 plus 11 plus 9 will be 84 will be here 84 so i can write now 84 divided by 7 divided by 7 will be here 12. will be 12 so no remainder this is whole number will be 12 so the mean here here will be what will be 12 will be 12. Right. 
we solved we solved here the first two questions remains here number three and four and five i will send now after your schedule today i will send to you uh, this as homework you can you can uh, try find number three and four and five yes tell me who has question uh, i said for the questions that three four five but خلاص. Yes, we have five questions. We solved the first two questions, one and two, and I will send to you after you schedule, inshallah, uh, this worksheet as homework, and you can solve it and send me the answer, okay? So this is okay. our lesson today. Now let us to take attendance. We'll start by 6A. Okay, this is the first period here. This is six A. Oh, today, Tuesday. Uh, Ahmad. Mr. Ahmad, do you want to finish the lesson? We finished Ahmed Al Jabri. Ahmed Al Jabri. Hamdan. Hamdan Amri. Mawjood. Great. Hamdan Al Hijri. Hamdan Al Hijri. Absent. Taib Zayed Al Nuaimi. Zayed Al Nuaimi. سالم هداف موجود. أوكي. عبد الرحمن. موجود. عبد الله أحمد. عبد الله أحمد التميمي. موجود. عبد الله مانع. عبد الله مانع. موجود. جيد. علي حمد. موجود. تمام. عيسى يس عيسى عيسى ابسنت عيسى موجود موجود اوكي فلاح موجود اوكي فلاح استاذ موجود منصور احمد موجود جريت مستر عادي يطلع يس يو كان منصور راشد مستر بطلع وبدخل لان هني انت معلق على زاي عايف موجود ميلاد موجود جريت هزاع هزاع موجود 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 مستر جريت هزاع جريت مستر منصور نايف موجود 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 6 بي ناو اوكي يلا مع السلامة مستر سلام خلفان الفان موجود آه خليفه موجود دويس دويس موجود استاذ تمام دياب دياب مستر انا طلعني بالغلط اوكي آه سالم جمعه سالم جمعة مش سالم طلعني بالغلط طلعت بالغلط محاضر سالم موجود تمام سلطان خليفة موجود استاذ موجود تمام موجود سيف سيف سالم استاذ موجود هذوني تمام تمام عبد الله محمد موجود استاذ ممتاز فارس فارس محمد سالم الراجدي محمد الراجدي محمد سالم الراجدي نفسنت اوكي محمد عبد العزيز موجود استاذ تمام تمام محمد عمار 
محمد عمار محمد عمار ابسنت محمد عمر موجود منصور علي موجود منصور محمد منصور موجود محمد. موجود تمام موسى موسى ابسنت موسى نعم مستر موجود اوكي مستر امير مستر امير محمد عمار محمد عمار هير ناصر نعم استاذ نعم مستر ام هير سالم مستر واي نعم استاذ نعم سالم هداف حطيناك حضور ما هو انا كانه شايف في بعض الطلاب بتكون نايمه فجاه بتصحى يعني خليكم مركزين معي الله يرضى عليكم ركزوا معي نعم استاذ طيب. نعم تمام ناصر تمام اوكي ذيس از اور ليسن توداي توداي وي دو ريفايز فور ذا مين فور ذا مين ذا فيرست ميجر اوف سنتر ثانك يو فور يور ليسننج هاف ا نايس داي سي يو تومورو السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته مع السلامه مع السلامه